Hello and welcome to Chili Bee Gaming. I'm Evie and today we're back with some more Alone in the Dark, Emily's story, as part of our Spooky Saturdays playlist. And last time we ended up here, back in Deceto, after being in New Orleans for some reason. Very strange, very strange. But we're here. We're here now and we can carry on. So, ring the bell. Gotta ring the bell every time. Can we go in here? Ooh! Yes, we can. Marvellous. Okay. Ooh. Broken plates. Paul, you're right about the plates on the boiler and the clock. They have been sabotaged, and I think I know who did it. They have something to do with Jeremy's episodes and how he seems to disappear at night. Right now, it's important that you keep an eye out for any of the pieces. I want to find out if I can repair the plates. Let me know if you find any of them. Lottie. Tell Lottie to take a look at the well in the kitchen garden. There you go. Okay. Hmm. All right. What do we got here? Staff and patient directory. Dr. Elmore Lee Gray is DeSetto's chief doctor. Accounting and all administrative work is handled by me, Paul Waits. Magdalena Thompson, or Mags, is responsible for the household. Jean-Baptiste and Charlotte Tabois are responsible for keeping the guests' medical regiments in check. Finally, Jack Chance is our gardener, who can occasionally be seen in the conservatory, but is, for the most part, busy outside. There are currently six guests at Dossetto. Malcolm McCarthy and Ruth Talant reside on the first floor. Jeremy Hartwood, Elisabetta Perosi, Grace Saunders, and, of course, Cassandra Beauregard live on the second floor. Hmm. Okay. There you go. What's this? Room key number six. Hmm, yes. Well, we shall, we shall wander around there. Is there what have we here? Repairing the boiler. Saw you notice in the boiler room. You should know Mr. Chance won't be coming back. I got no business being in there myself, but... You can take a valve from the wine cellar if you want to try to stop the steam pouring out. Be careful. <gasps> My god, that was loud. Okay. I need the key. Hmm. Can we use Batiste? No? No? Okay. Alright. Curiosity and all that jazz. So this kind of seems to, from what I understand, it follows the similar line of Eddie's, but obviously we're playing as Emily, and I think we can probably find out, maybe get some more um, lanyaps with Emily, and we also find out her story. Patient files. Okay, uh, yep. Cassandra Beauregard, the beloved author. Very exciting, isn't it? What do you want to put down for a reason for admission? What her agent told us. Cassandra suffers from writer's block and needs to finish her moving picture script before the end of June. Mr. Chardot suggests Cassandra's heavy use of barbiturates is holding her back and risks ruining her career. And how should we summarize her personal history? Let's keep it short. Cassandra Beauregard is a beloved crime author who managed to pull herself out of poverty and into stardom. Five years ago, she tried killing herself by jumping off a balcony. Whoa. The incident left her a cripple and now relies heavily on her wheelchair. And for diagnostic impressions? Cassandra suffers chronic back pain following her suicide attempt. She self-administers morphine to keep herself ambulant but has become addicted and the desired effect is now lost. The drug abuse clouds her mind and she is unable to focus on real life. To save herself from this insight, she instead makes up stories to fill out the gaps in her own thought process, resembling the Korsakoff syndrome. Oh, bravo, Doctor. How will you treat her? First of all, she needs to be weaned from her drug addiction and hopefully it will resolve her compulsive lying. Then look into permanently numbing her pain in her back through surgery. Finally, deal with her suicidal thoughts. Fantastic. With such a short time before June, I really hope she gets better soon. We will do what we can. 
Grace Saunders, 11 years old. Reason for admission? The mother insists on strict supervision by a proper gentleman to avoid further perversion of Grace's adolescence. Personal history? Grace's family possesses modest wealth and status. Her childhood seems ordinary, spending most of her time with private teachers and family friends. Grace's father recently passed away, leaving her mother the sole caregiver. And diagnostic impressions? Grace has trouble dealing with her father's death. She is willingly suppressing her feelings on the matter and isn't properly acknowledging the trauma she suffered. Any planned treatment? Grace needs nothing out of the ordinary. She simply needs parental guidance. Eventually, we can work on her feelings toward her father. Thank you, Doctor. I'll finish the paperwork and get her installed. Malcolm McCarthy, 54 years of age. Reason for admission? McCarthy admitted himself to Dossetto, stating simply that he needs some damn rest. And personal history? McCarthy claims he used to work as a lawyer in Baton Rouge, but says he can't go into details because of some legal dispute. His background remains largely a mystery, except for the occasional clue that he drops in conversation. Huh. And diagnostic impressions? McCarthy is an anxious man and an alcoholic. He often tells half-truths due to some deep-seated inability to trust other people. And how will you treat that? McCarthy will take some time to open up. Spending time with Jack's dog or the child should be good for him. Their harmless nature will help build his sense of trust. Thank you, Doctor. Elisabetta Perosi, 33 years old? What should I put down as reason for admission? Well, Perosi broke into Dorsetto and was found wandering the Grand Parlor. She was confused and suffered partial amnesia. She insisted she belonged here and offered to pay for her stay. Right. What do you make of her story? Perosi claims to have been a member of the Astarte artist colony some twenty years ago. A claim that seems contrafactual due to her young age. She looks to be and even thinks she is thirty-three years of age. That would make her a child at the time. It seems fair to say that Perosi's story is untrue. Deliberately so or not. Diagnostic impressions? Do you have anything? Perosi's story is peculiar, because she retracted her story about the artist colony. She no longer claims to be the same person as Elisabetta Perosi. However, my staff's research has confirmed there was a Perosi at that time who was in her early thirties. I suppose this case will take some time to investigate. How will you go about it? I wanted to contact the real Perosi, but it seems the whole colony disappeared one night. September 29th, 1915, during a hurricane. I will have to take it slow and figure out what this spell of impersonation could have been. Oh, I'm sure it will all clear up eventually. Thank you, Doctor. Um, Ruth Talon, 29 years of age. Reason for admission? Ah. Oh. Ruth's father wishes that his daughter be removed from New Orleans nightlife for the foreseeable future. He fears that her overly free spirit is tarnishing the family's reputation. Sounds simple enough. Personal history? Ruth comes from considerable wealth. Her family owns several hotels and restaurants. Unlike the rest of the family, her sense of adventure has taken her around the world, including France during the Great War as a photojournalist. The last decade, she has provoked many rumors of being a debauched flapper, bordering on nymphomania. And diagnostic impressions? Despite her father's frivolous reasons for her to be admitted, Ruth does seem to provide an interesting case. She is refreshingly open and doesn't shy away from talking about her life during the war or her continuous celebration after returning to the States. She is admittedly a sexual deviant and feels no remorse. And her treatment plan? Simply staying at Dorsetto should do wonders for Ruth, if not at least for her family's reputation. Ruth doesn't need to change, but with therapy I might be able to share with her some sympathy towards her family. 
I doubt she will settle down and become as dull as the rest of them, but at least she might try to be more discreet in the future. Hmm. Well. Interesting. Right. Yes. It's all a patient file except for Jeremy's. Yes. Looks sturdy. Doubt I'll be opening this. Indeed. Hmm. Well. What's this? Oh, not a list we can get hold of. Okay. Hmm. Well. All right. Hmm. Well, we know where the old clock is, so let's go and have a peep. But. Hmm. Okay. Let's What's have that a look. stain? Looks like some kind of rot. Hmm. Okay. This must be the clock mentioned in the commonplace book. This looks like the thing that held the talisman in the French Quarter, but it's broken and missing some pieces. Yes. Okay. Well, we know where we can find those things. What's, what's, what's... Isn't Perosi's room up here somewhere? Yes, it is. Right at the end. Let's go and have a peep. Oh. Nothing. Never mind. It's always worth a look. Because you never know. Ooh! Cockroaches. Fancy key. What a strange but beautiful room. Yeah. What's this? I must return. I did it. I crossed the thresholds to my intended destination without a focusing device. My talisman now knows these roads, and I have no need for the plates. I can find my way to Lafayette as easy as I find my own room. I visited the grave of my father and seen the oven waiting for me. Thank you for opening these doors. I now must summon my courage and go back to that hateful mound outside the oil rig. I hope you'll be feeling better when I return, Jeremy. Hmm. Well, all right. Hmm, are these zodiac signs? Hmm, yes. They certainly are. The door's closing up. Kind of freaky. Kind of freaky, indeed. Parosi's journal. Do I need to remember how to get them out again? They are locked up for good reason. I am sure she is still able to whisper the answer in the ears of the wrong people. But not for long. I will see her burn soon enough. That black goat will be sacrificed to put an end to it all. Then it will all be over. No more Derseto, and sadly no Astarte. Those good pirates of Pontchartrain. May you still sail the lake. Until you find the shores of Hali. Indeed. Indeed, Perusi. Yes, this picture. This was always The Astarte a... Artist Colony. I'm pretty sure they had a Mardi Gras crew called the Pirates of Pontchartrain when I was a child. There she is at the bottom, Perusi. Mm. Right. Little shoes. There's some aggressive looking rot on these paintings. Yep. I think I remember correctly we have to turn them all over. And then yeah, maybe like that. Hmm. William, Franklin and Nora. William, Franklin and Nora. Yes, they were up here, weren't they? So William. Two, nine, four. Two, nine, four. Yes, I remember now. So two, nine, four. So then this corresponds to her journal, does it not? Two, nine, four. So Pisces, Pisces, a Libra, and Taurus. Pisces, Libra, Taurus. 
Okay. Yes. So, Pisces... Pisces? That's Pisces, isn't it? Libra. Taurus. Taurus. There you go. Ah, here we go. The piece that we want, the broken item, uh, a piece of a large decorative plate. It has a dark and burnt quality. Marvellous. Kablam. Well, there you go. We freaking did it. Let's go. Oh, yes. Ugh. Look at the like, eggs on the ceiling. Gross. What? Oh. Lovely. Ugh. Are those like eels or something? Okay, this is kind of stinky. Ow. Okay. Yeah. Can I just, 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 yeah. Excuse me. Ow. Ooh. <gasps> Jesus. <sighs> well, we can put this piece in. Everything's back to normal. Yeah. Okay. Ugh. Yeah. So now we need to go to the small parlour. Where is the small parlour, actually? Um, we haven't been in Batiste's room. That might be quite interesting to take a peep. Small parlour is downstairs, is it? Yes, there it is. In the library, but we need to find the key. Hmm. Hmm. Indeed, hmm. I need the key. Oh, we can't get through there, really? Okay, well, maybe, maybe we can find something else in here. Yeah, it's all back to normal. We need the key now, it's locked. Uh, what about Batiste's room? I kind of want to go in here. To the peep. Ooh. Nothing. Ha! Huh. How typical. Okay, well, nothing of any note. That's fine. All right, so we need to go to the small parlour, but we need to get into the library, don't we? Hmm. Okay. Let's rock and roll. So, I wonder if Batiste's keys would open the library. Maybe. Or didn't we have to go into the garden? Yeah. What? That was weird. All right. Did we read that? Pieces of plate. You know, Mr. Waits, oh. I saw a piece of the plate that Liza broke. I think she's been hiding them. She's not very good at it. She just chucked it into the little room with all the tools behind the boiler. I left it there. I didn't want to embarrass her by picking it up while she was looking. We went upstairs instead and played backgammon. I let her win. Because she's so unhappy. The piece looked like the one on display in Cassandra's room. You know about that one already, right? Or is your eyesight really that fuzzy? I hope you don't feel bad about your glasses. You only look stupid when you squint. Maybe if you had more eyes, you would see these things. I wish you had all the eyes you needed. Your best and favorite guest, Grace. She's a peach, isn't she? Okay. Hmm. Well, let's head back up. Jeremy's room. All back to normal. Hmm. What's this? Emily is here. Oh! Emily is here! One of Gracie's drawings. Cool! Well, I mean, that's nice and all, but. Doesn't really help our case. We 
go into the library. Oh, hello, Ruth. Yes, Ruth. Good evening, Miss Hartwood. That is your name, isn't it? I would be terribly embarrassed if it wasn't. You're right. Emily Hartwood, Jeremy's niece. Nice to meet you. Ruth. Ruth Talon. you're smoking <laughs> how terribly quaint maybe so but I like it would you care to share some that smell is making me feel very nostalgic Is it all that you hope for? I enjoy your light mockery, Miss Hartwood. I can tell we would make great friends. How flattering. Too bad you're locked up in this place. <laughs> your insincerity is really refreshing. I wish you were mad as I am. Then you could stay. Give it a few years and I might just be. Lunacy is one of my family's few privileges. Oh, good. I'll be looking forward to it. You don't know anything about what happened to Jeremy, do you? Everyone here is really strange, and it's hard to know what to make of anything you hear. Occasionally, it sounds quite exciting, though. Good versus evil and all that. I'm sorry, but... I don't think I have anything useful to share. It doesn't matter. Thank you for the much needed break. Bon voyage. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. This is Lost Plantations of Louisiana. Lost Plantations of Louisiana. Thierry Briglow, 1917. There settled was a small plantation on the eastern shore of Lake Pontchartrain. The land was considered difficult for industry and was sold for only $30 to Elia Pickford in 1818. Pickford employed hundreds of workers from nearby New Orleans to clear the woods and build a small plantation mansion facing the lake with a striking Greek Revival temple facade. Desseto kept a modest production of barrique tobacco and indigo that persisted up till the Civil War. During the antebellum era, Desseto was the source of many rumors concerning voodoo and witchcraft. People who traveled the lake reported seeing people dance at night in front of bonfires, bleating and wailing. On June 17, 1862, Captain J.W. Norton of the Union Army recounts leading a raiding party from ships anchored in Lake Pontchartrain in order to seize control of Desseto and free the slaves working there. The captain was surprised to find the workers fighting back with unprecedented zeal. Norton's account describes these men and women as enraged with fanaticism. Pickford reportedly tried to placate the raiders, but was shot in the confusion. Captain Norton left the mansion burning and retreated to his ships with his men. Their settle was left in ruins for several decades, 
The ownership of the land was long disputed and returned to the Ledoux family in 1901. Several police reports were filed during the following years as the Ledoux tried to get rid of a camp of squatters on their land. The police made several visits to remove the trespassers, but the people kept returning. On November 1st, 1907, Inspector Legrasse of the police charged a deadly attack in order to save several children kidnapped by the squatters. Many were killed, and even more were jailed. The following year, Ledoux rebuilt Desato, incorporating the surviving stone foundation and adding a magnificent wrought iron conservatory. The farmland had been reclaimed by the surrounding woods, so it was no longer profitable to use as a plantation. Instead, the house was turned into an artist's colony. The Astarte Artist Colony was a successful group of artists, including figures such as painter Heinrich Cassel and poet Nora Keith. The group was also known for their beloved Mardi Gras crew called the Pirates of Pontchartrain. On September 29, 1915, a tropical hurricane tore through Louisiana, causing Lake Pontchartrain to flood New Orleans. Due to the remote location of their settle, it took almost two weeks for outsiders to learn that the artist's colony was abandoned. The twelve residing artists had all vanished without a trace. The empty mansion of Der Seto still stands on the shore of Lake Pontchartrain, with much of its temple facade intact. The Ledoux family currently has no intention of repairing the house. Hmm. Well, it doesn't really answer our question, but... Anything else over here, Ruth? Yes, Ruth. Very curious. All right. Okay. Ooh. What have we here? A fire poker. I will take the fire poker. Shotgun. Now this hey. will come in handy. Brilliant. Just what we needed. Exactly what the doctor ordered. Or the, well, maybe the doctor didn't order it. What? It's wet shut. All right. Ugh, why are there so many cockroaches around here? Is it gross? Ugh, stinky. Open up. Ah! Oh! Oh no, not again. What the hell? What's this? Oh, another board or something? Okay. Should we maybe, I don't know. Okay. Okay, I didn't mean to do that either. Right. The whole place is ablaze. What's this? Bolt cutters. Hey! I'll always take bolt cutters. Why is the place on fire? Is this oil underneath us here? Well, okay. Let's... yeah. Yes. I don't understand what's happening. And now the radio's on. Well... Good grief, this place gets stranger by the day. Stranger by the minute, actually. Odd. Very, very odd. Yes. What if this tree whispers? It whispered to Eddie, so... It doesn't whisper to Emily. Hmm, maybe she's not susceptible to it. Who can say? Okay. What's going on here? What are you doing sneaking around? You almost scared me to death. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to disturb your ritual. 
I wouldn't have guessed voodoo was in practice at a place like this. The doctor may be all about science, but I know these roots have power. You know what's going on here? I have a feeling Dorsetto is cursed. There are several players with stakes in this game. Dorsetto isn't cursed or blessed. It's a battleground. And it would all be a lot better if you could get your uncle out sooner than later. That's all I'm trying to do. I wish you the best of luck, Miss Harwood. I really mean that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to look after my gombo. Hmm. Very strange. Very, very strange. The housekeeper buried something in the flower patch beneath one of Dr. Gray's windows. She was singing in some Creole language, performing a peculiar bourgeois voodoo ritual. Certainly not an unfamiliar sight in the French Quarter, but Voodoo had never felt this bitter to Emily. Hmm. Yes, indeed. So, what did she bury? Was it like it looked like a, like a? I'm not gonna lie, it looked like a little cat or something. What's that? So. It's another piece of broken plate. Hmm. Ah, okay, so we need to find something to fit this. Yes, um, I believe it is quite prevalent voodoo in um, in New Orleans. I don't know, I've never been. Never been to New Orleans. I'd like to go. I think it'd be amazing, but well. Maybe one day, maybe one day. It worked. Oh, an axe. Hello. Should we take the axe? I'm going to take the axe. And the water hose. Perfect. Thank you. Oh, uh, what's this? So we can connect this up as I walk around with the axe in my hand. Okay. Okay. If I remember correctly, we have to turn the water on. Down here, isn't it? Yeah. What is that in there? Can I... Where did it go? Okay. There we go. That was a little weird, but fine, all right. Hmm. I never noticed that last time. There we are. Take that piece, thank you very much. Now we have another piece of the puzzle. Hmm. Okay. Can't help but... Yeah, be a little freaked out by that. Because where did it go? It didn't look like there was anywhere for it to go. But well, we'll see. Let's let's head up to the the clock. <gasps> Ruth gone. Where did she go? What? It's blocked. Ugh. Okay, what what the hell's going on? What? Oh jeez! Oh god! Okay, okay. Why, 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 why can't I pull out my Good God. Well that was yeah. Okay. All right. Jeez, Louise, that was terrifying. Okay. Oh, what do we got here? So we got a pickaxe. I got a pickaxe now. I'm not afraid to use it. 
I don't like this. Not one bit. It's freaky. Is there anything over here? Ugh. I bet this is... yeah. Okay, that wasn't so bad. No. All right. Well, okay. Never mind. It's fine. It's all fine. We're all fine. Good God. Okay, it didn't... yep. Didn't mean to do that, but that's fine. Good God. Ugh. All right, let's put this plate in here, and then we just I think need I've to. I've seen this somewhere. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Did it break? The clock just stopped. Okay. So six, six, four, three. Six, four, three. Largest to smallest. Hmm. Okay, so. Uh, six. Oops. Oh, oh, no. Uh, four. And then three. There we go. It's showing me something. Yeah, the corridor That's where... It's just the hallway outside Jeremy's room, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Maybe we need to go in Jeremy's room? And anyway, we don't have the key, though. Um, okay. <gasps> This... I did it. I yeah. opened up another dream. Oh yeah, I remember this place. It was horrible, and it's still horrible. <clears throat> oh. Okay. Well, this is yeah. This is lovely. Let's um. Let's wander into this room, shall we? Just, yeah. Just so we're in a, a reasonable spot. Yes, I remember this place. I remember it very well. But we are going to leave it there for today, folks. Next time we will continue onwards through the swamp as we did with Eddie and who knows what we'll find with Emily. Maybe we'll find out something more about Emily because last time it appeared that maybe she had been married or maybe she'd had a suitor or something of the like very strange hope to find out more so until next time be safe be good and do look after yourselves <laughs>